What is up guys, Evil Lewis Arm here today, and today I have for you a video where we're going to be going over the very first things you need to do upon hitting level 55 in Blade and Soul. Um, this is the new updated version of the guide that I do all of the time whenever some major changes happen in the game, and this is one heck of a major change. So anyway, we're going to go through about 10 different things that you need to make sure that you do before, um, you know, or right after you finish the story. So let's get right into it and start off with the very first one is actually finishing the story. And I don't mean just playing through the uh, Act 8 story here up to Chapter 20. Um, I mean also doing these two orange quests that you see on the side over here. So the Fate of the Aransu chapters and the Khan of the Har chapters. Um, you want to make sure you finish those. Those are going to put you to HM 7.5 if you use the level 55 voucher. And if you play through the story all the way from level 1, it'll actually put you directly to uh, HM 8. So um, with that being said, you're also going to want to make sure you distribute your Hongmoon points after doing this. So Hongmoon points are super important in this game. They increase your stats tremendously. Um, and they are located here on the P menu. So you press P on your keyboard and it'll open up this menu. You click Hongmoon points over here. You want to distribute them at least 20 and 10. So 20 to offense, 10 to defense would be my recommendation when you're first starting. After that, adjust based on how you are um, feeling. You know, if you're confident in not getting hit too much, start adding them to the offense. If you are taking a lot of damage and are struggling to survive, uh, go 10 points into defense would be my recommendation. Or add more points into defense, rather. Um, but yeah, base is 20 and 10, um, what most people run. Also, if you're running a raid, um, you're going to want to put 20 points into defense. Uh, regardless, the bosses do a lot of damage in raids, and you want to make sure that you're surviving. Um, if you're dead, you're not doing DPS is the general uh, way to put it. So that's how I would distribute Hongmoon points, um, and that's just a little thing. Make sure you have your Hongmoon points selected. All right, so that is Hongmoon points finishing the story. Next thing is Hollowed Accessories. So finishing the story, you get these Solok Accessories, right? Solok Accessories aren't the uh, the greatest. Uh, they're, they're okay, but you can actually purchase better ones from this merchant right here. So the merchant is located here. We are in the Elf Village of Valindria, or the whatever village of Valindria. Yun, there we go. Uh, Yun Village of Valindria, and this merchant right here has the entire Hollows accessory set for 60 Naryu Silver. Um, I believe completing Master Hong surveys at the bottom give you 40 Naryu Silver, so you just need to manage another 20 Naryu Silver to go ahead and pick up all of these uh, accessories. So these accessories are better than the Solak accessories. Um, as you can see, I have the full set right now on this new character. So this is a one-point wonder here. You can purchase the six of these and uh, upgrade your character just like that. Um, so yeah, make sure you pick up these accessories uh, when you complete level 55. Um, after you get those accessories, you're going to want to go ahead and move into upgrading your uh, weapon itself. So for playing through the little level 55 patch, you're going to get a scale burn weapon. Scale burn weapon is not worth upgrading. Um, you can actually just purchase the Baleful or Seraph weapon outright from a merchant located in Grand Harvest Square. I'm going to have a more in-depth video on this whole Baleful Seraph of obtaining and how to get these six gem slots and all that. Um, in another video, it's kind of a little bit more complicated than just something to cover right now. But I'll link that video when I do have it out in the description above. So, or the, in a chat box above. But anyway, um, if you did play through the story from level 1, you're going to have a Bale Floor Seraph Stage 1 weapon. Um, based on the Act 7 reward that you get. So, with that, you're going to want to upgrade it. So to upgrade your Bale Floor Seraph weapon, you left click on it, then you click Manage Equipment, and then you click... Uh, this Void Fragment Path. So this Void Fragment Path is the cheapest way to upgrade your weapon all the way 1 through 9. Um, after you get past 9, you're going to have to use the weapons that it says and the more materials. But using Void Fragments is so much cheaper right now. Uh, Material-wise, it costs way less. Um, the Void Fragments themselves are pretty cheap on the marketplace right now if you wanted to buy them. You can actually purchase Void Fragments on the marketplace. Um, if you don't have the money to purchase them, they can be farmed from Celestial Basin. And Simply farming Celestial Basin will probably take you about 15 hours. You see they're 10 gold apiece right now. About 15 hours of farming Celestial Basin to go ahead and upgrade your weapon from stage 1 to 9. So that's a nice little weekend job for you uh, if you wanted to get it. But um, yeah, so Void Fragment Upgrade Path is the way to go for upgrading your weapon. Um, and to get that, once again, you click on that, left click, manage equipment, click on your weapon or bail floor seraph, whichever one you are, and then the uh, Void Fragment Path right here. And then you just click Evolve once you have all the materials. Super simple. Alright, so that is upgrading your Baleful and Seraph weapon. Next thing is getting the Pinnacle Accessories. So the Pinnacle Accessories are better than these Hollows Accessories. So just like in my other videos on this, you want to make sure you pick up the Pinnacle Accessory set next. Pinnacle Accessory set is obtained from uh, Shattered Mass, Gloomdross Incursion, and Sogan's Lament. Sogan's Lament has the Belt and Earring. Uh, Shattered Mass has the Necklace and Bracelet. The Ring is from Gloomdross Incursion. So you want to go ahead and make sure you pick up those accessories uh, as well. 
Um, those accessories are better than the Hollow's accessories, so put them on as soon as you get them just for running those dungeons. You're going to have to run the dungeons to upgrade your weapon anyway, because you do need the uh, different materials that you use to upgrade it. Um, right here. The uh, Flower of Lament, then you got the Tycon skins. Uh, you need to farm those dungeons anyway to get it. So, that is upgrading your accessories, upgrading your weapon. So, next thing is the Hexagonal Gem. So, Hexagonal Gems have been made incredibly accessible right now. Um, they cost about 120 gold to get each one of them, um, and that is probably the easiest way to obtain them. Also, the marketplace occasionally has uh, gem powders on sale in the Hongmoon store, so if you do want to spend a couple dollars, you can go ahead and pick up a hexagonal gem, which is actually pretty cool. Um, but anyway, if you are free to play and want to go ahead and pick up those hexagonal gems, all you're going to do is buy gem powder on the marketplace. So type in gem powder, and you want these Hongmoon gem powders. Each hexagonal gem costs four gem powders. Um, so, like you can see right here, basically it's going to set you back 120 gold per gem uh, that you purchase. So you're looking at about 700 and something, 720 actually gold, to go ahead and upgrade your hexagonal gem set all the way up to hexagonal gems. Um, it's a great upgrade and a, a great thing to do uh, as far as gearing your character. Um, if you hit the inventory key, go to the exchange or the Dragon Express menu down here, it's the fifth tab over, and then you go ahead and click on this gems tab, uh, it's the little gem. You can see all the different gems you can get, and you see each one of them takes four Hongwen gem powders. Um, as far as upgrade order, what I would recommend is getting your diamond first, getting your aquamarine second, your amethyst third, your ruby fourth. I like the peridot, so I would go with the peridot fifth, and then between sapphire or citron, depending on how much CC your class has, um, look into it a little bit more. Also, if you do a lot of PvP, then pick up the Amber instead of the Citrine or Sapphire. Uh, the Amber is one of the best PvP items you can get in the game. So once again, the order on that, Diamond, Aquamarine, Amethyst, Ruby, Peridot, and then Amber for PvP, Citrine if you have lots of CC, and Sapphire if your accuracy is low. Um, that would be how I would distribute my uh, spreading of gems. So once again, you get six slots, and you can put these six gems in. So that is the next upgrade. That'll cost you 720 gold, so you'll be at that one for quite a while. Next thing we're going to talk about is upgrading your soul and your pet. So I have actually quite in-depth guides on these, uh, on how to actually upgrade them. But, um, you know, that's something you should work towards. I'll link those in the description below. Um, check them out to see the information on that and more in-depth. But as a general quick note, make sure you're upgrading these uh, items. To see how to upgrade it, you can't upgrade the soul lock soul that you get from the story. So uh, you actually need to pick up a Moonwater soul. So if you have the level 55 character, you're actually going to be struggling to go and find that. You're going to have to farm Naryu. Naryu, what is that one? Uh, Naryu Labyrinth, there you go, uh, to upgrade it into the Hong Moon Energy Stage 1. You can also obtain a Hong Moon Energy Stage 1 from the Exchange tab on Dragon Express. So Dragon Express, same place we just were. And then you can see there's a Hong Moon Energy Stage 1 for 250 Black Rose Feathers and 25 Received Secret Techniques. So you're going to have to run a lot of Heaven's Mandate to pick up the Hong Moon Energy via that route. You can also purchase it with the Oathbreaker set. The Oathbreaker set is super expensive uh, gold-wise. So you have the sword blade, you have the uh, blade points that you need to purchase, and then you have the false edge, and the false edge is running like 100 and something gold right now. Uh, yeah, there's 128 gold, 118 gold for that, so uh, it's super expensive to get it that way, so I recommend uh, just holding off until that price drops, or um, until you get enough uh, black rose feathers to purchase it, or just farming the one from uh, Moonwater Plains. You can pretty much solo that dungeon at this point in the game. So you can run that a couple times on your own and get the stuff you need to buy it. All right, so that is uh, the soul, that is the pet. The pet I have separate videos on on how to upgrade it. It's really not too much of a, a difficulty though, but yeah, you, you uh, have to upgrade your pet as well. <laughs> um, next thing to talk about is uh, crafting guilds. So crafting guilds in this game are super critical, but really the only one that's absolutely mission critical that you join it now is going to be the um, uh, Soul Wardens Guild. So Soul Wardens lets you craft Soul Shield Primers. Soul Shield Primers are infinitely cheaper to craft than they are to purchase. I mean, if we go ahead and look at the Soul, what is it called? Shield Base, I think they're what they're called. Shield Base um, for the blue ones is 45 gold. You can craft them for about six gold, seven gold, I think, um, in the uh, Soul Wardens Guild. So you're going to want to make sure you uh, do that instead. Make sure you join Soul Wardens and craft them yourself. Um, also another one to pick up is Radiant Ring. Radiant Ring gives you the keys uh, used to open weapon chests for your weapon upgrades along the Dawn and Rift path or um, Baleful 10, 11, 12. Uh, absolutely necess necessary as well um, to have those keys to open that those chests. So uh, those are the two guilds I'd recommend right now um, for gearing your new character. 
Next thing is going to be collecting Raven Feathers for your BT Soul Shield set or joining BT Rays to get the BT Soul Shield set. So now you get your 8 piece MSP just for finishing the story, which is pretty cool. Um, but you're going to want to get the BT set as soon as possible since the BT set is such like an upgrade, if you will, um, over the other, other stuff in the game. So your BT8 set, uh, the easiest way to get it is to get your first three pieces um, via Raven Feathers. So before you can get into any raids, you're going to have to run these... Uh, Basically, it's like dungeons, I guess. There are mini raids. So you've got your Donna kind of car, you got your phone around to school, and you've got the new one. Just came out. Can't remember its name. Oh my god. Ah. Regardless, there's a new one. So you can go ahead and get your uh, Raven Feathers through those routes, those avenues. And then that'll give you your weekly challenges for the week. Um, so your weekly challenges are located over here on the weekly challenge tab. And that'll give you another three uh, Raven Feathers. Then you get your. Uh, bonuses here and all that great stuff. So Snow Jade Forest, there it is. So basically that'll get you about 10, 15 Raven Feathers a week um, from running that. All right, so now you've got your 10 to 15 Raven Feathers. You need about 70 to go ahead and get your first three BT pieces. So go ahead and buy those first three BT pieces. Once you get those, uh, start looking to get into BT Dungeon or BT Raids. Um, BT Raids, people call them out in the faction chat all the time. Um, if not, start your own. If not that, then join my Discord and uh, sign up for my BT Raids. I've got a lot of people that run lots of BTs all the time, always looking to help new people. So once again, join the Discord in the link below and uh, get yourself in on some BT Raids to uh, start putting up your Soul Shield. Anyway, guys, that is basically it. Those are the first things you should be doing after hitting level 55. That'll keep you busy for quite a while. <laughs> It'll definitely keep you busy for a while. Um, but after you do do that, I do have guides on... Uh, legendary accessories, uh, further legendary weapon upgrades, um, all the other stuff you need to do after you get the stuff that you see listed here. So check those out on the channel as well. They're all in the playlist called Gearing Guides. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Check out some of the other stuff on the channel. i got a lot of great content, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.